Hello everyone, this is your first lesson under Earth and Life Science subject ninyo sa senior high which is about the origin of the universe. So paano ba nagsimula ang lahat? From the tiniest particle, papunta sa pinakamalaki. I'm going to show you here some pictures because we need first to define ano ba yung universe. This is Earth and we live on this rocky planet and this is part of the solar system together with seven more planets. We call it solar from the Latin word sol meaning sun. And this solar system, it is part of the Milky Way galaxy together with 200 million stars. And ditong ating Milky Way galaxy, it is one of more than 125 billion galaxies that make up what? Yes, the visible universe or tinatawag din nating observable universe. According to our definition right here, the universe is the whole cosmic system of matter and energy of which Earth and therefore human race is a part. So as in everything, from the atomic level up to the biggest stars and galaxies, yes, part yan ng universe. So pag-aaralan natin ngayon yung creation myth, that is number one. And number two is scientific theory, kung paano nila ipinaliwanag ang origin of the universe. Let us start with creation myth. According to the definition, it is a symbolic narrative. When we say narrative, story siya. And when we say symbolic, then that story stands for something else. And that something else is the beginning of the world as understood by a culture. So it is something that concerns the existence of the universe as understood by a culture. Or we can say that as understood by a particular religion. So halimbawa, ayon sa Genesis, the creation of the entire cosmos took place in six days. The biblical creation tells that God created the universe. Now, itong creation myth, kinoconsider siya as sacred. When we say sacred, banal. Bakit? Kasi meron ng participation ng supernatural forces eh, di ba? So, pwede nating sabihin na merong involvement ng isang spiritual being, a God, a transcendental being, kaya siya kinoconsider na sacred. Now, tingnan pa natin yung ibang characteristics ng creation myth. So, number one, all creation myths are etiological. Of course, etiological siya kasi ang etiology, it is the study of causation or the origination of something. So, ano ba yung origin ng universe? What might have caused the creation of the universe by a supernatural force or forces? Perhaps ano ba yung intention ng supernatural being? And it is also philosophical and theological in the way it is elaborated. Kasi nagsisilbi itong philosophy of life dun sa mga adherents nito. And of course, theological siya. Note that uh, theology, it is the study of God. And lastly, it, it assumes a spiritual world. Dito kasi papasok yung idea natin that there is someone or something or can be many of them that has or have the dominion or rule over the material world. Yes, merong material world. Ito yung ating na-experience by our senses. And there is also this spiritual world kung saan dito nagdidwell yung mga spirits. Okay? And before we end sa ating discussion about creation myth, I have this question to you. Ang creation myth ba ay scientific? Siguro ang sagot agad natin ay hindi kasi bakit ko pa ihiwala yung category for creation myth sa scientific theories, di ba? Pero sa palagay nyo lang, mayroon kaya itong scientific implication? Baka naman creative expression lang ito ng science. Okay, so what do you think about it? So let us proceed sa ating next part which is about scientific theories, about the origin of the universe. Let us start with uh, the theory that is most accepted by the scientific community about the origin of the universe which is about the Big Bang Theory. It was proposed by Alexander Friedman, isa siyang mathematician and physicist, at ni George Lemaitre, isang paring katoliko. So, ayon sa theory, there was nothing and nowhere, but due to random fluctuation in an empty void, there was a great expansion. Can you imagine that? There was nothing and nowhere. Ako sa totoo lang, hindi ko ma-imagine yung nothing and nowhere na yan. Pero that is Big Bang in a nutshell. Yun yung buod nun eh. Okay? Nagkaroon ng random fluctuation or, or disturbance in an empty void, kaya nagfa-follow na yung, kaya nag-follow yung great expansion. Gusto kong i-take note yung random. If everything is created from the random flu from random fluctuation, palagay mo ba ay may purpose ka? Kasi random lang naman yan, eh, di ba? So baka sabihin nyo na uh, Big Bang Theory hater ako, pero hindi naman. I think it is just good to ponder on this small thing and put a spice of, you know, philosophy. Now, going back, so we remember that this is not an explosion but an expansion. Siguro kasi makoconfuse tayo dun sa bang. Parang may sumabog, di ba? But hindi. Again, it was an expansion. Lumawak. Lumaki. Nag-send ng space, time, and matter in all direction. Mula saan? Mula sa singularity. So lahat ng nakikita natin ngayon at na-experience ay nandun sa singularity. Doon nagsimula ang lahat. 
pati ikaw, pati ako. So itong singularity na ito, tinawag ito ni George Lemaitre na primeval atom. Noong 1920, na-discover ni Edwin Hubble na ang universe ay expanding kasi yung mga galaxy, they are moving farther apart. So if the universe is expanding, maaari na nagsimula siya into something na napakaliit. Hmm, isang proof yun ang Big Bang Theory. And after millions of years pa, yung mga hydrogen gas, they clump together, nagkumpol-kumpol. And dahil sa great pressure and gravity, kasi nag-work na dyan yung gravity, isa sa mga fundamental forces of nature, kasama yung uh, weak, strong, saka electromagnetic. Di ba? Yun yung uh, four fundamental forces of nature. Nag-form ang mga stars and galaxies. So, ayun, nalaman din natin ang mga stars ay mostly hydrogen. At saka helium, okay? So, we go back to the beginning, yung bang, yung big bang. So, ano kaya yung nag ng big bang? Even natural laws kasi, they stop making sense doon sa pinakang simula. Yung pinakang simulang simula pa. Even time, na wala ng sense doon. It stopped working. Now, what if the big bang is the end of the previous universe? And after the big bang, na-create yung bagong universe, then na-perform uli into singularity dahil sa contraction magkakaroon o din ng Big Bang at mafoform ang bagong universe. Yun yung tinatawag nating cyclic model ng universe. Kung bagay yung Big Bang ay eh, nagsisilbing shifting period sa destruction and creation ng dalawang universe. Alright? And uh, we are done with the expanding universe theory. Now proceed tayo into another alternative theory ng origin of the universe. It was proposed by Thomas Gold, Fred Hoyle, and Herman Bondi noong mid ng 20th century. So, the theory proposed that the universe is unchanging in time and uniform in space. So, ano ang ibig sabihin nun? Ibig sabihin, ang universe noon ay siyang universe ngayon at siyang universe pa sa mga susunod na panahon. Ang tanong is that, ang steady theory ba ay agree that the universe is expanding? The answer is yes. So, how come ang universe ay expanding pero ang unchanging kasi ay ayon dun sa uh, perfect cosmological principle? Okay? So, the universe is homogeneous and isotropic in space and time. The same as it always has and always will. Ano ang ibig sabihin nun? The universe appears to be just the same. So, it appears to look the same in a larger scale. Okay? So, uh, mag-rely lang muna tayo dun sa given definition though may mas, mas, may mas komplikadong uh, paliwanag pa rito. Okay? It also views continuous creation of matter at the same rate that old ones become unobservable. So, dito nasakop yung observe yung universe bilang expanding and unchanging. Meron kasi tayong recessional velocity na tinatawag kung saan yung mga astronomical objects ay lumalayo dahil sa expansion ng universe. Now, ayon sa Big Bang Theory, pag may expansion, yung amount of matter ay bumababa in a given region of space. Now, paano naman ito ipinaliwanag ng steady state theory? Kasi nga kailangan ang uh, universe ay unchanging. So, para manatiling constant ang universe, isotropic, kailangan ng continuous creation of matter. At ayon sa theory, wala rin creation at destruction ng universe. So, it does not predict the future. Okay? Itong theory na ito ay rejected dahil ayon nga sa mga evidences, lalo na yung sa uh, yung red, redshift ng, galaxy, kung, ng galaxies, kung saan lumalayo ang mga galaxies as shown by the spectral shift ng light into a longer wavelength. Yun yung uh, redshift. Ano? Yun lang yung redshift. Pero hindi tayo masyado mag-focus doon. Basta ito yung isa sa evidence. Ano? Itong evidence na ito ay pumapabor doon sa Big Bang. Kung saan merong finite age ang universe. Ay ayon kasi sa steady state theory, infinite ang age ng universe. It is infinitely old, which, contad- which contradicts the evidences. Okay? Let us proceed to the inflation theory. It was proposed in 1980s by Andreas Albrecht, Alan Guth, Paul Steinhardt, and Andre Lind. The inflation theory proposed a period of exponential expansion of the universe prior to the more gradual Big Bang Theory. Ang inflation theory, ito actually ay extension ng standard Big Bang Theory. It was uh, able to solve the limitations of uh, Big Bang Theory na nag-challenge dun sa standard Big Bang Theory. Kasama dyan yung flatness problem, which is tungkol sa geometry ng universe, and yung horizon problem dahil dun sa uniformity ng cosmic microwave background radiation. Pero hindi na muna natin ito bibigyan ng pansin sa ngayon. Siguro gagawa na lang ako ng uh, iba pang videos para dun sa mga challenge sa standard Big Bang Theory na binigyan ng kasagutan ng inflation theory. Okay? And lastly is the string theory proposed in 1960s by Jan, by Jan Schwartz. 
So, ayon dito, the assembly of particle type is replaced by a one-dimensional fundamental building block called string. Ito yung res replacement dun sa fundamental building block na particle. Kapag kasi narinig natin ang particle, naiisip natin ay eh parang maliit na bilog, di ba? A solid sphere. Pero ayon sa inflation theory, imbis na ganun, uh, one-dimensional string ang fundamental building block. Pero we can still think of a string as particles in a larger scale for strings to be recognized as just particles. Pero itong mga particles na ito, nasa kanya yung mga properties like yung mass. Okay, again, we can still think of a string as particles, pero nasa larger scale na tayo. Okay, and there is only one type of string, but this string can vibrate into different ways and interact with other strings. So, sa ating illustration, we have here graphite, which is made of carbon atom, carbon atoms. Ang nucleus nito ay merong proton and neutron. Alam natin yun sa ating uh, chemistry. Okay? And ang proton at neutron ay di pa yun yung fundamental uh, particle kasi meron pa itong quarks. Now, ayon sa string theory, ang quarks ay made of strings. Just like ordinary strings but a lot of physics are going on there. Okay? Itong string theory ay may aim ito na i-connect ang general relativity ni Einstein which is studying the world of the very large and yung quantum mechanics is studying the world of the very small. Incompatible pa kasi itong dalawa pero kapag may isa na theory na mag-unify, na mag-coconnect sa dalawa, wow, it will be a breakthrough sa field ng science. Okay? And that's all for our lesson, the origin of the universe. I hope you learn and thank you so much.